Hi, in this series, I'm going to show you how I make Kiris using Blender and Substance Designer using no external images or photo scan models. We'll first make the Kiri model in Blender, and while the face looks like an image, I actually made this texture procedurally using Substance Designer, so in this series, I'll show you how to make that as well. Let's start by looking at what makes up a Kiwi. A Kiwi is made up of the body. They come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes, but it's generally egg-shaped. At the top, you can clearly see the remnants of the stem and sepal, which are these furry brown leaves. And on the other side, you'll see thicker dark hairs protruding from the bottom, which are the remnants of the stigmas. If you cut down the middle, you're not left with a perfect circle, but more of an oval shape, so the height and width are not the same length. Kiwis are covered in hairs, but on the end they're longer. Most kiwis you'll see at the grocery store have their hairs flattened, probably because of all the handling they receive. Because of this, we want most of the hairs to be bent over. So let's start by creating the hairs. The way I made them is to create a rectangle, and then create a loop cut and extrude out the face from the side. This creates the overall bent hair shape. Mark the seams and UV unwrap. Add some loop cuts so we can start creating the bends in the hair, and add a subdivision modifier at level 2 and apply smooth shading. Using proportional editing, bend and rotate the mesh to create the wavy and wrinkly hairs. The hairs should not be cylindrical, but should be flattened, like the shape of a rounded rectangle. Keep bending until you get a nice twisted hair. Apply the hair material afterwards. I then shrink them down to the appropriate size, around 2mm in length. Apply rotation and scale. We'll adjust the size again when we instance them using geometry nodes. Do this a few times to get some variation. Not all the hairs are bent, so we want to create some straight hairs as well. Afterwards, group them into two collections one for the bent hairs, and another one for the straight ones. Now on to the kiwi body. For the body, let's get started by creating a rectangle, and we'll create the general egg shape by adding a subsurface modifier on level 3 or 4 and apply smooth shading. Now shrink the rectangle until it's about 5cm in length and 4cm high. Apply rotation and scale. Now because we don't want perfectly circular kiwi slices, we need to scale inwards on either the x or y axis the fruit slightly. There's no exact value here, just eyeball until you feel you have the right shape. If we look at reference pictures, we'll see that kiwis are a bit boxy rather than egg shaped. To get this rounded box shape, we want to create a loop cut and move it to one side. This extends the thickness of our body to that side. To create the ends, select the end face and inset a new face, then scale it down. Afterwards, move the face inwards towards the body midpoint to flatten the end. Scale that edge we just created outwards slightly to further add girth to the kiwi. Now basically do the same thing on the other side, and continue to adjust the end faces and edges to get our desired shape. Again, there is no exact shape or dimensions, just keep adjusting until you get the shape you like. Now off to making the seams and UV unwrapping our kiwi. In this tutorial, I'm keeping the seams simple. You will see some distortions near the seams and the poles, but because the kiwi is covered with hair, you won't notice this most of the time. There are other ways to do the seams, but that's out of scope of this video. After creating the seams and unwrapping, apply the kiwi texture. In the UV editing tab, scale the mapping so you get your desired pattern size on your object. To add some surface details, we'll use a displacement modifier with a strength of 0.001 using the clouds texture with a size anywhere between 0.001 and 0.01. But this is just a rough guide, you may need to change the values to get the shape you're looking for. We need to have some control over where the hairs show up on our kiwi. This will make sense a bit later on when we create a sliced kiwi. To do this, select all the faces and assign them to a new vertex group called kiwi hair. We'll use this group to limit where the hair appears on the fruit later on. This is the basic kiwi shape, and now we'll add the hairs using geometry nodes. For covering the kiwi with hairs, we're going to use geometry nodes. But because we're going to use hairs of different lengths in different places, we're going to design our node tree so that they're reusable on different objects. I'll provide the node graph in the description box below. First, start off with the distribute points on faces node. Select Poisson disk and the density max has to be a pretty large value because we're dealing with such a small object and link it to an instance on points node. For our hairs, we want to create a collection info node. Select our bent hairs, check separate and reset children checkboxes, and link it all up. Remember to check the pick instance checkbox. 
Now create our join geometry node and link the input geometry and instance on points to it. Once it's done, we'll see hairs on our kiwi, but they don't look right. That's because they're all facing the same direction. We need to add some random rotation. There are many ways to do this, and I'll show you one quick way to get it done. Create a rotate Euler node, check loco, and link the rotation of the distribute points to the rotation Euler input. Link the rotation output to the instance on points rotation input. For the rotate by input on the rotation Euler node, we want to feed in a random value node. The type should be vector, and the max x and max y value should be zero. We only want to rotate around the z-axis. As we change the z-axis, we can see that the nodes are randomly rotating around each of the hair's local z-axis. The hairs are still too big, so we need to scale them down. Create a random value node and set the min value to 0.34 and the max to 0.350. This outputs a float between the min and max values. But the scale input of the instance on points takes a vector, so we can link them by first multiplying the constant value to a vector math node. Set one of the arguments to be all ones and the other one to be our constant value. Now we have a scale value that's set with the value coming from that random value node in all x, y, z variables. If we do a quick render, we can see we're getting there. It's looking pretty kiwi-like. As I mentioned earlier, we want to reuse our node tree, so we want to create some inputs to our node setup. Create inputs for density max, density factor, and seed nodes on our distribute points node. Create more inputs for the random max value, and the min and max range for our random scale value. And finally, our collection instance. This will allow us to change the collection, bent or straight hairs, depending on which ones we want to use. Now back on the modifiers tab, we see our input parameters. Set the density factor input to the kiwi hair vertex group we created earlier. This will limit where the hair appears only to the vertexes associated to the group. Set the collection to bent hair. Make sure the scale inputs are between 0 0.340 and 0 0.350 and change up the seed and z axis rotation. Right now all our hairs are bent over. We need to add some straightish ones to make the kiwi appear fuzzy and soft. To do this, we can reuse our geometry node setup, but change the density max to a smaller value because we don't need so many, and change the collection to straight hairs. Change the seed and z-axis rotation. After render, you should see something like this. Depending on the lighting, fool around with the rotation, scale, and seed values we use as inputs on our geometry nodes until you get a value you like. This is what I get after some fooling around. This looks pretty good, a nice fuzzy kiwi. Now we're going to create the stem and the base. We're going to be making the stem using different objects, combining them, and then finally placing them on our kiwi. We're basically like creating different toupees that we can swap on and off different kiwi bodies as needed. I've tried different methods and this is way simpler than attempting to create the stem by extruding out of the kiwi body. So let's get started. Create a cylinder that has a diameter of 5mm and a height of around 1mm but we'll adjust it as needed when we combine it with the kiwi body. Add a subsurface modifier at level 2 and add two loop cuts to create the sharper edges. On the top face, create three insets with the middlemost face, depress it down slightly and extrude the face upwards and add a loop cut to form the stem. Now scale this loop cut inwards just to make the depression steeper near the stem. We want the stem to be a different color than the base, and we can do this by using vertex coloring. Create a new vertex color index, and in vertex paint mode, paint the stem. Now apply the seams and UV unmask. Apply the material and scale the textures until you get the right pattern size, slightly smaller than the body. It's basically the kiwi material, but with more brown tones. All the stem objects are too small to notice any distortion near the seams, and they're all covered with hair. We want the actual stem to be a different color, so we're combining it with a uniform brown material using the vertex color index as a factor. Back to the object. Create a displacement modifier using the cloud texture with a strength of 0.001 and a size of 0.001. This will create the crunchy rough look of the stem. With the material applied, the stem should look like this. Now the stem doesn't protrude from the kiwi body directly we see that there's this other cylindrical object there, which I think is called the receptacle. 
For this, we're just going to create another cylinder, slightly bigger than our stem. There's no exact measurements for this, but I placed the stem beside it here for reference. Add a subsurface modifier with two divisions. Create some loop cuts on the surface and create a depression in the middle by moving the center face downward. This creates a little bowl for our stem to sit in. Add the same material as the stem and scale until you get the same size pattern. Now add some hairs using our geometry node tree that we created before. As usual, we want a mix of bent and straight hairs. If you look at the ends of a kiwi, they're a lot more fuzzier there. The hairs are usually longer and more dense. While you can control the density using geometry nodes, it's a lot simpler and easier to simply add the additional hair on another object and manually place it on top. Create a torus that's slightly thinner than the default size. This is the mesh that will provide the faces where the hairs will be placed. We don't want such a clean shape, so with proportional editing mode on, make a bunch of bends in the torus. From here, we want to add the hairs, but unfortunately we can't use the geometry node we created before. Because we don't want to include this torus mesh in our display, we need to create a copy of the geometry node tree and delete the join node. This will make it so that only the hairs will be displayed. Now we're going to add the crunchy, curled up, dried leaves that you see surrounding the stem. To start off, the basic shape is basically a leaf shaped object. Create a rectangle that's really thin. There's no exact dimensions, but here's where I started with. Create a loop cut vertically down the middle, and then a bunch more across. Now with x-ray mode on, manually move the vertices to create the leaf shape. It doesn't have to look very pretty because we're going to deform it quite a bit with modifiers. Mark the seams and UV unwrap. Assign the stem texture and scale until you get the desired look. Create a subdivision modifier with two divisions and add loop cuts to either side to keep the shape. Now we want to deform this. There are many ways to do this. You can do it manually or, as you see here, I'm using a Bezier curve to guide on how I want to create the large bends. For more deformations, we can add a simple deform modifier and for the final small surface bumps, a displace modifier. The strength is 0.001 with a clouds texture of 0.001. Finally, I use the geometry node modifier using our hair node to cover the leaf with hairs. Once you're happy with the deformations, apply the subdivision, curve, and deform modifiers. We can keep the displace and geometry node modifiers without applying them. Create four or five of these leaves and place them around the edge of the stem. Just manually place them until you get something looking good. On real kiwis, these leaves vary greatly, so you have a lot of freedom here. On some kiwis, they have short hairs, while on others, they're long and curled up. Before placing them on your kiwi, make a little depression where the stem will be placed. It should be slightly larger than the stem itself. Now, move the stem, receptacle, additional hairs, and leaves onto your kiwi body. Place them on top, and there you have it. In the next video, we'll continue with part 2 where we finish off the kiwi by creating the bottom and then creating a sliced kiwi. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching.